Hi, I'm Valder Beebe. I'm the host and the visionary of the Valder Beebe show, God Talk. Some people talk to God and others believe that God talks to them. Join us in conversation with authors, religious clergy, metaphysicians, and regular people like you and I and God Talk. God Talk is a podcast available on FM Radio, Roku TV, and online. Subscribe at ValderBBShow.com. You can also subscribe at YouTube.com slash ValderBBShow. Join the conversation of God Talk. I'll see you there. Good day and welcome to the Valder BB Show on one of my favorite days. It's my favorite day because it's close to the weekend. Thanks for being here. I'm going to start the uh, day off with two great guests. I've got Dr. Leah Smith. She's a pharmacist and she's a vaccine educator at GSK. And I've got a, uh, she brought a friend, Stan. He's a patient who likely contracted hepatitis A at a restaurant. Leah, Dr. Leah Smith and Stan, welcome to the Valder BB Show. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Well, I'm going to let Stan give me a little bit of his story, but Dr. Smith, before we get to that, what is hepatitis A and what should we know about the current break outbreaks? Because I like for people to have an understanding. I understand. Yeah. So thank you for asking. Hepatitis A is a uh, very contagious viral infection that can impact the liver. Uh, it can lead to sickness, hospitalization, and in rare cases, even death. And when we talk about hospitalization, over 50%, so about 60% of people who contract hepatitis A will require hospitalization. Uh, it's generally a short-term illness, but in some cases it can lead to more serious complications uh, like we'll hear about in Stan's case. Um, some people don't even have symptoms when they get hepatitis A, uh, but they can include things like tiredness, fever, uh, abdominal pain, uh, but the telltale sign is yellowing of the skin and eyes, and that's often accompanied by darkly colored urine. So if you experience any of these symptoms, it is important to seek out medical attention so that you can be evaluated. Uh, and regarding the you know, current Don outbreaks, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, please. Tell us yeah. about the current outbreak. Yeah, so these outbreaks have been going on since uh, 2016. And since then, over 42,000 cases have been reported nationwide. Uh, and when that happens, it just increases the risk of transmission in the general public. So that's why I'm glad you're talking about this with your audience uh, here on the eve of Liver Awareness Month in October. That is correct, and October is fast approaching. We've heard uh, somewhat about hepatitis B. We see a lot of commercials on it. So hepatitis A, we need to bring this to the forefront. Let me ask you, who's susceptible to getting hepatitis A? Yes. So in terms of who can get hepatitis A, really anyone can be at risk. And that's because of the way that it's spread. It can be spread from person to person, or it can be spread through contaminated food or drink. Uh, and so it's really not just for high risk groups, even though the highest risk would be in people who use drugs, and that would include injectable and non-injectable drugs, uh, people who might be experiencing homelessness, as well as men who have sex with men. But in more than 30% of the cases, there's no identifiable risk factor. And uh, so that's why the CDC recommends that any adult who wishes to uh, be protected against hepatitis A can receive the vaccine regardless of any existing uh, risk factors. That's a great segue for Stan to tell us about his story and about being vaccinated for hepatitis A. Stan, would you share for us in the synopsis format? Absolutely. First, I want to thank uh, GSK for sponsoring me and helping me share my story. My whole life changed after contracting hepatitis A. It's been really a nightmare. Uh, at age 65, I was in the best shape of my life and I had just completed a half marathon and I was enjoying retirement. Uh, after dining out, uh, I began feeling sick. Uh, I had some feelings of nausea and flu-like symptoms that would come and go on a daily basis. Well, after a period of time, I figured something is not right here. This is not normal. So I went and I saw my doctor uh, to see what was going on. Well, when he saw me, he sent me right to the ER. And at the emergency room, they decided that my liver was failing 
And miraculously, I needed to have a liver transplant to save my life because the hepatitis A virus was destroying my liver that I was born with. Now, life after the transplant has not been easy. It's been difficult. It's a challenge. We're still not through with trying to prove out some things. It's been four years. But through it all, I've kept a positive attitude and I've made my way back to a healthy and active lifestyle. But it's hopefully my sharing this story with you will promote awareness of the back of the virus and promote people talking to their pharmacist or doctor about getting the hepatitis A vaccine. Stan, thank you so very much for sharing your story. I know it will impact others and make a difference. Doctor, uh, let me ask you, I see that you attended, I got to say this, an HCBU, Howard University, and you sound very smart also too. Well, thank you. Stan's yes, story, is Stan's story unusual or usual for contracting hepatitis A. Right, yeah. So, first of all, yes, very proud of attending Howard University. Uh, Stan's <laughs> story is not common. So, most people will not have to get a liver transplant after contracting hepatitis A. Uh, I think, though, and we're very happy that he had uh, such a great recovery. It just highlights uh, what uh, some of the more serious complications can be. And like he said, uh, he wasn't aware of the vaccine, and most U.S. adults have not even had the vaccine. So, in fact, only 15 percent, uh, one five percent, have had at least one of the two doses that are required for long-term protection. So that means 85 percent haven't even had one dose. And uh, that's why we want, uh, during Liver Awareness Month, for everyone to talk to their pharmacist uh, and their healthcare provider, not only about hepatitis A vaccine, but about any CDC-recommended vaccine that's appropriate for your age. Okay. Online, where can we get more information? And we need, doctor, we need a list of vaccines. You know, we have a list for our kids, but we need a list for adults. But where that is can a we great go idea. <laughs> uh, you can go to cdc.gov. And if you're looking for information specifically about hepatitis, you want to go to cdc.gov slash hepatitis. Um, but on that website, think- you can find out about hepatitis and some of those other vaccines that might be recommended for adults. You guys head on over there because it's something we need to know. I want to thank you, Dr. Leah Smith. And I, once again, I want to salute you for being a graduate of of an HBCU. And Stan, I want to thank you for surviving. Thanks for being here on the Valder BB Show. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Hi, I'm Valder BB. I host the Valder BB Show broadcast on radio and television. And this is my phone pouch. My phone pouch is a great invention. It allows me to go hands-free, pocket-free, purse-free, even belt-free. Head on over to myphonepouch.com.